yards on both sides, yep. running and passing. But they don't have a lot of options outside of him. He's so good, and they ride that pony really hard, but he's, he's that good. Oh, he is that good. I mean, he's legit, and he's the reason that they're in the playoffs. They went 5-5 five and five this season. They were 4-3 and three in the end 10, and quite honestly, they didn't really beat a lot of teams that they were, you know, they didn't lose the teams they shouldn't have lost to. They didn't really beat teams that they should have beaten. Um, they're pretty much exactly where they are, but the reality is if you take like this off and set it to you, they're much better. They're, they're Who does a lot of short passes? Got over 50 re receptions, but there's they got a roster full of guys here. They got 15 guys who have got at least two or three catches on the season. So Foose knows the offense. He knows what to do, and uh, you know obviously the other teams know he's the guy we got to stop. It's just sometimes easier said than done. His main targets on the outside: Taylor Young, Nick Parks, Caden Fritz. Yeah, all receivers with some speed. They have good hands. We've seen them play a couple times. But this defense in the secondary, the back half of this Colonel Crawford defense, who is only allowing 15 points a game, yep. is so solid. Yeah, well, I think part of what makes Colonel Crawford so, so good is not just the element. Are you ready for the comeback? Man, I wish I was out there. Let's unretire. Why, Matt? Randy Moss. Dan Marino? You're right. Hey, Grandpa! Grandpa! I still got it! 22! 22! Do we again? Number 13! Let's see! Hey, hey, hey! I need that senior discount. Mr. Marino, you mind if I take a selfie? Thank you. I'm good right here, bro. <laughs> Unretirement? Who'd be dumb enough to do that? Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Casasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Casasa. He's going to send a line drive down the field. It'll be fielded on the bounce. That is Schieffer. Schieffer finds a hole at the center. Schieffer turns on the burners. Schieffer could go. He's at the 50, 45. He's got one man to beat. Schieffer with the ball in his left hand. He's going to take it to the house. Winford opens up the second half with a kick return touchdown. knows it because now they're on film and not just on film they've faced each other they felt each other they know how good another team is but ultimately you know it's hard to beat a good team twice but it's also harder um, if they team already beat you the first time to figure out a way to have the mental fortitude to learn from it and be able to figure out how to beat them this time we are getting set for playoff football here in week number 11 from Colonel Crawford High School. The number three seed, the Colonel Crawford Eagles, and the number 14, the Seneca East Tigers. We'll take a quick timeout. We'll have the kickoff when we come back.
National Crawford Eagles and the Seneca East Tigers. Matchup number two of 2023 between these two football teams. Very familiar with each other. Colonel Crawford winning the first one, 29 to 14. But a beautiful night for football here in North Central Ohio. It is 70 degrees. We have a slight breeze coming from the southwest. And we'll see Colonel Crawford. Senekees won the toss. They deferred to the second half. So Colonel Crawford will receive and head southbound. Back deep for the Eagles is number five. That's Trevor Vogt alongside number seven, Lucas Foy. Kicking off for the Tigers is the quarterback, Mr. Do-It-All, Blake Foose. Crawford in their all-black unis. They got the yellow shoulders, but the black pants, black jerseys, yellow numerals, and the black caps. Senekees wearing white tops, black pants, black helmets, and the black face masks. Foy and Vote, both speedsters. They can break yep. it open. Kickoff, kickoff coverage is going to be key. Field position will be key tonight for Seneca East. Foose is going to put it on the ground. It's fielded by the up man at the 40. He's going to drive forward, but a slew of Tigers going to bring him down at the 40-yard line, and that was Seneca East. Excuse me, or Brady Hill on the return. Excuse me. So Crawford with great starting field position on their opening drive of the ball game. And really, Jeff, you couldn't ask for better weather. Oh, it's absolutely. Get a little wind blowing, but, you know, nothing that's unmanageable. And, uh, again, for week 11, this is as nice as you're going to get. Um, fans are comfortable. Teams are going to be comfortable. And uh, it's going to be a perfect night for playoff football. Crawford will pack him in tight here in their first play from scrimmage. Votes in the gun. He's got a back on either hip. He's going to hand off. Here's Thomas. Thomas. Driving through B-gap on the left side. He's got two. That's well below his season. Yeah, average. absolutely sure <laughs> is. For Gary. But they'll call it three yards. Bring up second and seven. But I think that's what Seneca East has to do is they've just got to make Colonel Crawford work for every yard. They can't allow them to get not even just nine-yard gains but 20-yard gains. they just got to keep them to those two- or three-yard varieties and, uh, you know, make Coach Burner have to kind of go away from what the game plan generally is. We'll sub out the fullback, bring in wide receiver Parker Weifman. Boat's going to keep it on the RPO, and Boat picks up six. So he's going to be making a very manageable third and one from the 48-yard line. They need the 49 and a half. Yeah, very nice play right there. And again, that's what this offense does because all three guys are so much a threat that the defenders have to stay in their lanes. But if any one of those defenders get blown off the ball or get pushed out of the way or over-pursue, then it leaves open big holes for these backs. And with a guy like Vote, he'll make you pay. Seneca's now going to put six guys on the line of scrimmage as Crawford's going to pack the house. Boat under center, going to spin, hand off, straight up the gut, a big hold, second level, oh boy. third level, and more. Inside Seneca's territory, down to the 33-yard line. Big carry for, that is Mike That was Thomas. Thomas, yeah, absolutely. Gayhart on the stop for Seneca East, but the Tigers, they spread it out across that offensive front, or the defensive front, excuse me, and there was just not a lot of guys in the middle. Exactly. Walkers got to the second level, freed him up. And they figured out real quickly that Micah Thomas is not a guy you can arm tackle very well. You got to get in front of him. Thomas at 5'10", 2'10". Shotgun snap. They're going to go back to him. Thomas straight up the gut over the 30, and he'll fall. He'll be pushed back, I guess, to the 29-yard line. And that's part of the thing about Micah. He, you know, he's a very solid runner. He just runs strong and heavy, but he follows blocks and he follows the holes. He doesn't necessarily explode to everything. It's more of a, all right, I'm just going to kind of follow my blocks. And then when he sees that the blocks are kind of piling up, then he cuts and he finds openings. And then he's just so big, he tends to fall himself forward. That always gives him an extra yard or two. So, Tight end right, they'll bunch him to the left. Now motion man goes left to right to a slot. Vote in the gun. And he's going to spin. Little timing off yep. there. And Boat's going to be dropped in the backfield for a one-yard loss. And that's all timing related yeah. right there. Yeah, a little miscommunication in the backfield. As, you know, he was kind of doing a spin around, looking for in the one direction. Micah Thomas was running in the other direction. And uh, as a result, Vote just had to kind of tuck it and run. But the breakdown made it easy for the defenders to be able to find where the ball was at. And this is where Seneca East defensively has got to make stops. They, we got them in a third and eight now. If you're the Tigers, you can't allow them to get first downs or at least go to, get to the point where it's going to be an easy fourth down go for it. McMichael, Thomas, join him. 
him in the backfield in the They're gun. Gonna get they get it. Go to Thomas. Thomas spinning and gets thrown ahead for a first down at the 21 yard line. Second first down of the drive for Crawford, and they are nearing the red zone here early. And, and this is what I'm talking about in terms of who Colonel Crawford is, that even though it's third down and eight, yeah, they're in four down territory, you know they're running the football. I mean, they're figuring, even if we don't get it, we still think we can get five yards, go for it on fourth down and three, something like that. But the fact that they just got it all right there goes to show how tough they are to stop. Weithman splits wide to the left. Micah Thomas in the backfield on the right hip of Vote, And this time, Senek East gets in the backfield, but still Thomas able to fall forward. The and they're ball saying the ball came out. out. And Senek East has got it. Haven't signaled yep. yet. But Senek East is Seneke's running is off, so and it they got like it. The Tigers got the turnover. Now here comes the white hat. He wants to talk it over. No, he's just going to pitch the football. It's Tigers ball here in the first quarter with 8.21 to go. That defense holds. Yeah, exactly. They, it wasn't the easiest way to go about doing it and getting that stop, but uh, whatever it takes sometimes. And after a nice little drive down the field, a fumble right there from Colonel Crawford. Seneca East gets a hold of that football, and uh, they're going to be able to make that stop. Again, whatever it takes. Uh, again, they weren't getting it by getting stops, but sometimes creating turnovers is equally as good. And according to the stats, Jeff, that's the first lost fumble by the Colonel Crawford rushing attack. Here's Foose on first down, and he incomplete. And that yep. was actually Nick Parks lining up as quarterback. Foose yep. was the back. He split out on a bubble screen, and Foose dropped the football. Wasn't going to go anywhere. Defenders were on top of it. Again, and part of the problem of moving Foose even out of that that quarterback position is that everybody's following him to where, where he goes and they're going to do it again here it is parks Quick outside bubble. out to the out and a flag comes in but a gain of eight we'll see it's going to be a false start against Seneca East. that's yeah. going to back him up so the tigers trying to go a little you know throw the colonel crawford eagles off here early lining up parks who does have 10 pass attempts on the yep. year well, and what they're doing is they're putting Foose alone on the one side of the field and putting all the other receivers on the other side, and they got him stacked. So they're on the quick pass, like they're thinking, all right, the defense, your automatic thought is they're going to try to get it out to Foose on the one side. You try to get him to over-pursue, lean a little bit to the right side of the field defensively, and then you throw it over to the left, and you get the lead blockers there, but five-yard penalty works against Seneca East. That's one thing about Seneca East. They'll show you 20 to 25 different formations. Oh, absolutely. Here's Parks in the gun all alone. Looks quickly to the right side. Pocket collapses. Now he's going to run left. Foose, or excuse me, Parks with a little opening. Gets grabbed by his ankles and drugged down at the 16-yard line. Gained a few, but it's still going to be third and long. Well, there you go. I mean, now that Colonel Crawford has seen it, they tried to do that stack again. But, you know, when he went to go pump fake, he realized there was defenders all over it. They were all creeping up. And now he's like, I can't throw that. So he just had to tuck and run. Eagle defense, they're physical, but they are also fast. Absolutely. So here's third and long. Seneke spotted at the 16-yard line. Clock moving here in the first, or excuse me, stopped. Yeah, it is moving. Mm -hmm. We just got a little three-second bump here. Foos now back at quarterback, but a tough spot here at third down and about 12. Motion a guy in. Foos wants to throw. Pocket moves right. Foos stepping up, going to throw off his back foot deep. Oh, falls they down. got him. Oh, they're going to get the flag. Yep. Receiver tripped up. They'll Re get the pass interference call. Yeah, Justin Ryder down the field. The big Ka tight end. Yeah, kind of had a, like a little half step on the defender. It was pretty close. And, you know, Foos just kind of just throwing it up deep. He's just like, I'm just going to chuck it up there. Maybe my guy can get underneath it. And um, defender who's kind of following Ryder on the play, they're, you know, he started looking at the ball too. Ryder slowed down a little bit, and he just kind of body pushed into him. Um, foot, feet got tangled up, knocked him down to the ground, but the official was watching it the entire way. The 15-yard penalty will give Seneca East the first down. Now they'll go quads to the right on first and 10. Parks in the backfield, going to throw it. Complete on the right side, up the sideline, and a speedy, that's Taylor Young, Got a couple nice blocks out there out of that quad formation, and he's able to pick up the first down, gain of 11. Yeah, absolutely. Very nice play. And, again, that's what they've been trying to do is just spread out this Colonel Crawford defense, put blockers on bodies, and get these get the ball into these skill players who have the ability to get open in the open field, maybe make some guys miss, just use their speed. Trips to the left side. Luke Hicks, the wide guy. Two backs in the backfield with Parks. 
Parts dropping at the 34, setting up in the pocket. Parts He's in is trouble. Oh, the ball's, ball's out. out. It's going to be scooped up in a pile. Looks like Seneca East got back on it. Parks was drilled from behind. Yep. That's going to be a huge loss on that play. Seneca East was able to get back on it. Once again, Payne DeGray getting into the backfield. DeGray, the sophomore, 6'5", 210. He has become a stud of a pass rusher for Colonel Crawford. He's right there in Parks' face. And Parks' initial play is kind of broken down. He didn't, you know, end up having anywhere really to go with it. But instead of just tucking the ball down and, and either running away and trying to throw it away or just tucking and taking off, he just kind of, kind of fell in no man's land, was holding the ball out. Ball got knocked out of his hand. Foos back at the helm. Tight end left, motion man right. He's going to follow the motion. Foos running the football, gets over the 40. Gain of seven on that play. That's a good run, though, because at a, at a third down and probably 19 or so, they needed to get some of the yards back before this third down. It'll be third and 12 from the 40, and Senekis doesn't do a traditional punt. Foos yeah. will line up at quarterback and then kind of take a few steps back and do the quick kick. But a much different offensive approach here tonight by the Seneca East Tigers. Yeah, they're definitely throwing a lot of different looks at Colonel Crawford. Um, but again, you end up with that big sack, and they're still kind of in a, a, tough, uh, a tough situation for a third down. Quads left this time. Foose at the helm. One receiver to the right. That's Ryder. Crawford brings three. Foose sets up. He's got a man Ooh. incomplete on the comeback at the 50. That was right at the sticks looking for Hicks. And uh, I think we had some miscommunication. So that yeah. was third down, the sticks. Yeah, that was third down. It, this will be fourth now. They'll probably be in a – they'll get into their form because they'll quick kick. But uh, like you said, that was a third down situation. But, uh, again, well de well defended. I mean, the lanes were there while Hicks did a pretty nice job of finding a nice little soft spot. Um, Colonel Crawford didn't leave a lot of room. And with uh, Foose running and rolling out, running, throwing the ball across his body, it was a tough throw to make. Foose will quick kick and a good one. Going to bounce at the 21. Boat tracking, grabs it, shakes a defender. Foose oh boy. trying to make another miss. And he oh, down with the that, flag. They're going to get him for that? Yeah, the There's, flag came in before that Yeah, tackle. there was a flag before the tackle. Didn't know if they were going to call that one. Got him around the neck. Uh, they're going to say he didn't grab on to anything. No face mask, no horse collar. Just kind of almost more of a clothesline, but a flag... Risky play by oh. Trevor Vogt going backwards, grabbing that football. You know, it's one of those things that coaches will uh, sort of kind of look at their defenders and say, or so look at their players and say, hey, you don't need to do plays like that. But it's hard to take the athlete, you know, when you got a, a supreme athlete, to take that mentality out of them, you know, just put the ball in his hands and let him go. Looks I like think that wave the, off the flag. Yeah, that's just kind of where he picked it up, I guess, okay. in terms of the, the punt. Run play on first down. Here's McMichael. McMichael. McMichael up the right sideline. McMichael into his sideline, and that's going to be a first down. First time tonight we see the sophomore. Yep. Nice gain and another first for the Eagles. Over the 30 to the 32. And McMichael continues. You know, his uh, torrid running approach throughout the year because he doesn't get the ball as much as the other guys. It's sometimes for def it's easy for defenders to get lost and forget that he's back there, but he's so fast in the open field. Backs on either side of vote in the gun. He's got Parker Weithman wide left and first and ten. He's going to go, and his a face, face mask, mask comes yep. in. Multiple flags. No doubt. Thomas, the ball carrier up to the 40. Tackle made on that one by 44. We don't have a 44. Yeah, got about five yards on the run, but the face mask is going to just, 15. they're going to take that, give him the 15 yards instead. Second penalty tonight on the Tigers. So two long drives by both teams, but no points scored here in the first quarter. 4.48 to go in the opening quarter. Crawford will sub as they move the chains. First and 10 now in Senecaese territory at the 45 or 46 yard line. Eagles check the wristband. Vote going to set up in the gun. He's got McMichael on his left side. Two tight ends set. Vote standing at the 50. Has the snap. Pulling guard. McMichael the ball carrier. He's got four. 
following that guard up the hole. And that time, Seneke's able to plug it quickly. I actually like um, the play call, though, because McMichael so oftentimes gets run around the edges. I think that every once in a while, putting him between the tackles, even though he didn't get a lot there, um, it just kind of keeps the defense honest about when he gets the football. He could go anywhere. It might go around the edge, but it might be between the tackles, um, so you can't over-pursue him. Double slots, tight end right. Jet motion, he's going to turn, give Micah Thomas. Thomas over the 40, drives his feet to the 39-yard line. Call it a gain of three, and a very manageable third and three here yep. for the Eagles. No pass plays yet by Crawford. Nope. And when it's working, why I would you do it? I change it. Absolutely. Again, you know, when you run an offense like this that can get big yards on the ground, um, throwing the football just... There's just not really that much reason to do it. I mean, it's that's when the Moody Hayes thought process that bad things are going to happen. It does really kind of play in. Full house for the oh, big, hole. big hole for Micah Thomas up the center over the 30 and at the 29 yard line. That'll move the chains. I'll be honest, with you know, he just had a fleet in front of him. He sure did. Two two guys in front of him lead blocking, and they only just tripped him up at the ankle was the only reason that they were able to get him down because if they can't get him from behind, the two blockers in front of him are going to take out the rest of the defense. He's running to the end zone. Pack him in tight again. Two backs and a three point behind Vogt under center. Motion man goes right to left. Sets up in a slot. Vogt turns, gives counter action. Oh, great vision by McMichael. Cutting back to the left side. Going down at the 15. Move the sticks again. Yep. What vision by McMichael there. Just a sophomore. And it's going to be a fun next two years calling this team. Oh, he, yeah, he's unbelievable. As long as he's got blocking in front of him, he, he's going to do massive damage. And obviously he's going to be the workhorse for them the moment you know Micah Thomas graduates. Uh, and you can see it already how good he is. Seneke's defense needing another turnover as they spread out that defensive front. They go to the fullback. That is Thomas this time. Thomas still getting positive yards. And not a lot of eagle runs have gone outside, but Seneke's yep. spreading out that front four there. They brought some heat up the middle, but you want to clog those gaps and not allow those guys to pull effortlessly. Yeah, I, I think they, they're they concerned that if things do get around the edges, it's going to go for big plays. They just want to kind of keep them into, oh, let's make them just go five yards at a time or something like that. That's the game plan. Now they go seven across the front, try and shift it out. A great play made there by Nick Parks. Yep. Thomas, or excuse me. McMichael, McMichael trying to bounce it off the right tackle and Nick Parks coming in making a stop there and for a, a undersized safety he plays above his size yeah that, I mean that's not an easy player in the open field against a really fast and shifty running back um, not an easy tackle but he got him motion right to left boat under center and Senekis will shift but Boat's going to change the play. 15 seconds on the play clock. We're at a minute 37. Turns, goes. Thomas. Big play. He's got Thomas. There it takes is. Takes a tackle and finds Pater. Micah Thomas gets into the end zone with a minute 32 to go in the first quarter for the first score of the night. 11-yard touchdown run. And uh, I'll tell you what, the moment he, you know, it looked like that play got caught, that got changed, you could sort of see, like, you know, Trevor Hoat was looking at something, or maybe the coaches were, and they kind of set it in. And when Thomas got the ball, the hole was already there. And it was big. And I was like, oh, he's walking into the end zone here. Great blocking. Braxton Morton, the right footer, sends it through. And it's 7-0 with a minute 32 in North Robinson. You're listening to WQEL 92.7 FM and streaming live online on the OH Report. It'll be Senekees with the football when we come back.
loss. Boost will put Parks in motion. Now he's going to roll right. He is under pressure, oh. and intended receiver couldn't handle the height. Mm -hmm. Hot out of the hand of Blake Foose on the grass route. Yeah, looking for Parks. But it'll be you know, third and 12. I got to tell you, you know, part of, I think, what they're they're dealing with here is they're trying to get Foose into that moving pocket. They're trying to roll with him because they know that the line is going to struggle blocking this very strong defensive front of Colonel Crawford. But the reality is, is that Foose isn't getting time even on the roll-up to set up and throw. He's got guys chasing him, and he's got to rush the ball out of his hands. Quads right on third and 12. Foos wants to throw. Crawford brings four. Has time. Now he's going to step up. Coming back to the left side. Throws the stiff arm. Foos at the 15. Nears the sideline. And he's going to duck out of bounds. He's hit over there. But he tried to stay in bounds yeah. instead of avoiding the hit. And that's what you get out of Blake Foos. He is not going to shy away from contact. No, he's bigger and stronger than most of the guys he's playing against. Mm -hmm. So to him, he's like... Go ahead and take a shot at me, because if I can get you to overrun or come off me a little bit, I might be able to sneak past you and get the first down. But uh, ends up being a pretty good positive yards, but unfortunately with the the uh, earlier mistake, uh, it's just a fourth down, and being too deep in their territory, they're going to have to punt again. Foose tries to go with the hard count. He's got trips to the right, one to the left, back in the backfield. Now he's going to step back and quick kick. Low snap. Foose gets it away. Somebody might have got a piece of that. Just cleared the the yeah. uh, offensive lineman. Actually worked out pretty well yeah, for Seneca East. Seneca East Tiger roll. It rolled 25 yards, so. It'll be first and 10, Eagle ball at the 37. Be interesting to see if Seneca East had enough time defensively, their coaching staff, to think of maybe a different way to uh, play Colonel Crawford, because quite honestly, the only reason Colonel Crawford didn't score on their first drive is because of a fumble. They're moving the ball pretty much at first will. First of the year, which yeah. is incredible. Right. First hey. loss fumble of the year. Yep. So if you think about it in that sense, they've got to make some adjustments. I mean, already, you can see we've we got 25 seconds left in the first quarter, and if they don't want this thing to get away from them, they're going to have to figure out a way to do something differently against Colonel Crawford. 25 seconds here in the first. Eagles will actually line up two receivers to the right side. Now they'll shift the formation. Tight end in the wing, go right. Vote, high snap out of the gun. Going to spin, hand off. Micah Thomas shakes an arm tackle. Hit by Parks, carrying the pile over the 50 and down at the Seneca's 48-yard line. Yep. Micah Thomas, 5'10", 210. He's going to run over you. He ain't going to run around you. Well, you know what? The guys who are trying to hit him are 150 pounds, you know? He <laughs> ain't getting guys from the linebacker or even the line. The linemen aren't touching him at all, and the linebackers are barely touching him. It's all defensive backs. That'll be the final play of the first quarter here in North Robinson. The Eagles lead the Seneca East Tigers 7-0 here in week number 11. You're listening to WQEL and streaming online on the OH Report. Are you ready for the comeback? He's going to send a line drive down the field. It'll be fielded on the bounce. That is Schieffer. Schieffer finds a hole at the center. Schieffer turns on the burners. Schieffer could go. He's at the 50, 45. He's got one man to beat. Schieffer with the ball in his left hand. He's going to take it to the house. Whitford opens up the second half with a kick return touchdown. <laughs> Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Casasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Casasa. We'll have Davey Jones in the Friday night phone board. So stay tuned after the game tonight. Davey looking for all playoff scores and anything you want to talk about in the wide, wide world of sports. Call him up, 419-562-2222. Toll free out of town, 1-888-843-0024. First and 10, they flop sides. It'll be Eagle Ball at the center. Are you ready for the comeback? Vote going to shift the formation. Thomas goes to his left hip. Vote in the gun. 
He is going double reverse underneath. McMichael. McMichael on the end around. Takes the oh. arm tackle. Oh, just tripped up by Parks. Parks got him at the ankle. Ankle biter to get him down. But a first down for the Eagles. They get it to the Seneca East 36. Yep, that's all you sometimes you need is a little misdirection to just keep that defense honest. You know what? We've been running straight at you this entire time. Well, we're going to just do a reverse. So that way you know if you come at us too hard, you over-pursue, you lose your lanes, we'll go in the other direction. Double tight, wing left, two backs with boat. It's McMichael. McMichael, shifty move, goes up the gut, and a gain of about five up to the 30. And once again, it, you know what? It, it, that's nothing fancy, but it is a great job of reading your blocks and where the, the openings are at. I mean, if he goes straight ahead, it goes three, but a little cut back gets him a couple extra yards. And both Thomas and McMichael have become really excellent at doing that, following their blocks and figuring out where the holes are at. Foy will split wide right on second and five. Blitz up the gut. Here's Foose. Foose getting Thomas in the backfield. Yep. Great play by Blake Foose. Absolutely. Foose with a little fire yeah, he as he gets up. Senekis needed a big play, and there's the senior quarterback, middle linebacker, making it for the Tigers. The, it, it almost even didn't even necessarily, the way he came up, it was almost like he called it himself. He was like, I'm sick of this. I'm going to go make a play right now. I'm, I'm not going to sit back here and let them keep running down our throat nine yards at a time. I'm coming to the backfield. I'm going to get back there before the lineman can even stand up. And he did. Big play by Foose. Foose showing heat. Now he's going to drop back. Ooh. Yep. Vote with a hard count. Almost got the Tigers to jump. McMichael going to shift right to left. Vote in the pistol. He's got Thomas behind oh, there's him. There's a flag. And a false start. False start. Somebody moved early. Say on Crawford. A little... Little movement there, and you can see the linemen. They're not. They're not moving. They're all just staring at him, like, "Who are you talking about?" There's yeah. no way. And the official even said, "This is what you did," but they didn't seem. Uh, they didn't seem convinced. Mm -mm. So we'll back him up five penalties, even at two apiece, and now it'll be third and long for Crawford. And if this rush game couldn't just gash you at any time, you'd think, well, they are running team. Third and long isn't necessarily what they want to be in, but yep. they can do it. Yep, and, and they do. Tiger territory. They go to Thomas. Thomas gets a few of them back over the 35 down to the 34. And this Hicks is on the stop for Seneca East. It's so interesting because, you know what? I was like, it, you know what? Most teams, I was, I was like, ah, this is still outside their kicker's range. Most teams don't even have a consideration of a kicker. They do. Yeah, you know, Morton, Morton is, is stud. But this is pretty far. So on a fourth and eight, they're going to have to go and they're going to go for it here. And we'll see what they can, you know, dial up. It's like we they have a wildcat. No, nope. it's Baker and it's okay, the quarterback. Baker pumps, gives to McMichael, trying to stretch it outside. McMichael makes Got one, it. makes two, makes three, miss. McMichael up the sideline. We will see you later. Six for McMichael. Oh, no, they're they're saying he got it. No, nope. got knocked out at he about the one and a half. It, but what a run by McMichael. Yep. Making three guys miss, turn on the burners, and he puts them inside the five at the the foot line. I, I love what they did play-wise. They bring in Baker. That moves vote to receiver, so it makes the defense think they're going to try to throw the football to vote. But nope, they give the handoff to McMichael. They got a shot at him, but he makes a miss. Big play. And Both there he's turns, in. gives to Thomas, and Thomas is in. Well, it's McMichael, oh, I think. 21-22, it's Micah Th or, excuse me, McMichael. Give yep. it to him that time, and it's 13-0 with 9.06 in the first half. That was one of those, A, you pretty much should have gotten on on the last play after that great effort. So we're going to give it to you one play later. And uh, Colonel Crawford, they're making it happen. You know, Seneca East, they got him in a fourth down and eight. You got to make those stops. Weren't able to do so. No surprise that the Eagles are in the end zone. Crawford will challenge you. Here's Morton on for the extra point. Snap back, hold down, kick up, and it is good. 14-0 here in the second quarter in North Robinson. Crawford, the three seed, over the Seneca East Tigers, the 14 seed. We'll be back with the Tigers in the football right after this. Man, I wish I was out there. Let's unretire. Why, Matt? Randy Moss. Dan Marino? You're right. Hey, Grandpa! Grandpa! I still got it! 
22. 22. To win a game, number 13. Let's see. Hey, hey, hey. I need that senior discount. Do you mind if I take a selfie? Thank you. I'm good right here, bro. <laughs> Back on WQEL and the OH Report, 14-0. Colonel Crawford on top of Seneca East here in week 11. Gayhart and... Blake Foos back deep. That kick is going to sail out of bounds. So Seneca East will catch a break on the kickoff yep. as Morton sends it out of bounds. So the penalty comes in. Good starting field position for the Tigers on their third drive. I, I think this is going to be as important as a, a play as, or as a drive as we're going to see in this game for no Seneca doubt. East. I mean, they're down 14 nothing. They finally have decent field position to start a drive. And uh, Colonel Crawford has other momentum at this point in time. They've got to stop it here. They've got to get some movement going. And part of it is they can't shoot themselves in the foot. Um, no more sacks, no more penalties, things that are going to you know, kind of halt this offensive drive. But uh, I, I think they've got to figure out a way to uh, get themselves going here. And uh, maybe that might include a little bit more running with Blake Foose. Yeah, exactly. This is where you rely on your leaders to get you back in this football game. Plenty of time in the first half, only a two-score game. They're going to bunch quads left. Foose alone in the backfield. Quick sling out left side, and the dropped receiver it. dropped the football. Yep, looking for Young. A little bit of a low throw, but certainly catchable, and he had some blockers out in front of him. Once again, they're doing that quads to the left, and uh, it's Caden Fritz alone on the, the right side by himself. They're going to hurry up. poses a matchup. Here's Foose. As you said, a quick snap. Foose trying to run it up the gut, and he is going to be smothered by the Eagle defensive front. Give him credit, though. I'll tell you what. Foose, this is the reason why I thought that maybe they could try to run the football with him a little bit. Yeah, he only got a yard and a half, two yards there. But it took three Colonel Crawford defenders to bring him down. I mean, he's going to give them everything he's got. We saw it on the defensive side. Um, and now offensively, he's not going to go down with one guy. He's going to just keep fighting his way through. Just a matter of whether or not his line can give him the blocking he needs to be able to run it a little bit. Empty backfield on third and long. Trips left, two to the right. Oh, Boost they got a hard uh, count, and it's going to be. The question yeah. is, are they going to get Crawford make contact? Oh, and, they're going to call false yeah. start on Seneca East. Yep. Start. Unfortunately, they they got a jump. Yep, they got a jump, but unfortunately, on the left side, there's a right side of the offensive line that is guard picked up, mm -hmm. and uh, you know that five yards, pretty costly for Seneca East. Clock moving here in the second. We're at 8.15 before the half. Same formation. Trips to the left on third and even longer. Foos sets up to throw. Has time. Uh, Over to Parks. Parks had it and dropped it. They are dropping He's passes. He's with himself. Yeah. It was right there. Got to hold on to it. Look, they, they've thrown six passes in this game. They've only completed one of them, and I'd say three of them have been dropped. So, mm -hmm. you know, unfortunately, this is sometimes what ends up happening when you get down is, you know, you get teams that, you know, they, the, the, you get kids who start feeling like I've got to make a play here, take the eye off the ball, start looking up the field a little bit, just little mental mistakes. Doubles formation, Foos, will quick kick on fourth and long. Gets rid of it. A nice punt by Blake Foose, boat under it, but he's going to let it bounce. Oh. Oh.
Lions is going to run back out. No, I hear you. So I take my point about well, this is really bad. Not sure what the call is here. The officials really didn't signal much, but Colonel Crawford's offense back out on the field, and they're going to spot the ball at the 17-yard line. After the penalty, Colonel Crawford first. So it will be a Crawford penalty. Motion man will go left to right, set up in a wing. No touchdown, they wave it off. Vote gonna try and run for it himself. Vote is hit hard over there. Slung down after a short gain on that play. Gain of four, clock continue to roll here. Trying to get things back going. It was a blind side block, so. After the initial touchdown call, offense forced to come back out. Now it'll be second and 15. What is the, um, what's the line of Ball at the 14 yard line. Vote with two guys behind him. Tight end left. He's going to spin. And it's going to be an ISO trying to bounce it now is Thomas. And Thomas is brought down to the door to the play. Loss of one on the play. It's going to be a loss of one. So brought down behind the line of scrimmage. Nick Parks once again. Big time play by the safety. Minute 25 and counting here before half. Crawford trying to take a three score lead. It looks like we will be back up and running as usual. We got things figured out here. It's lost connection, we apologize for that. Vote in the gun, high snap gonna sail over his head. Vote's gonna have to re reverse and he picks it up back at the 29 yard line. And if you're a Senate East fan, that's snaps. exactly what the Tiger defense needed right there. So it's going to be fourth and a mile. Will they drop Braxton Morton out on the field? Spotted at the 28. That'd be a 38, 40, about a 40, 44 yarder. Clock is at 35 seconds. Time and out. They're going to take a Seneca timeout. Seneca East will take a timeout. Stop it with 35 seconds to go here before the half. So we'll take one as well. We'll be back on WQEL and streaming live online on the OH Report. Okay, Tanya, can you hear? He's going to send a line drive down the field. It'll be fielded on the bounce. That is Schieffer. Schieffer finds a hole at the center. Schieffer turns on the burners. Schieffer could go. He's at the 50, 45. He's got one man to beat. Schieffer with the ball in his left hand. He's going to take it to the house. Whitford opens up the second half with the kick return touchdown. Thankfully on WQEL, 92.7 FM, WQEL.com, we apologize for that break here in week 11. Technology. Sometimes it's our friend. Sometimes it's our foe. Sometimes it makes you want to throw things. <laughs> I was going to say. Sometimes it tests <laughs> our patience. But 35 seconds to go here before the half. Colonel Crawford looking at a fourth and long. Hey, Seneca East is putting Foose Dap back deep on this field goal, thinking that uh, if he misses it, maybe we can catch it and go for the return. But... It's going to be a 44-yard yeah. attempt for Braxton Morton of Colonel Crawford. Morton, the senior kicker. Snap back, hold down. Morton, Look at all that of it kick. into it. Morton, he's got enough. It's good. Boom. From 44 yards, <laughs> Braxton Morton punches it through to make it 17 to zero. And in division six, you don't see a kicker with a leg like that. But Braxton Morton makes it a three score game here at the end of the first half. The Tigers will get a chance, 30 seconds to go. But everybody, every Eagle faithful is fired up after that kick. Oh, how could they not be? Unbelievable kick right there by Morton. And, and again, right when it left his leg, I was like, that's straight and it's got, I think it's going to have the leg. It, you know, probably would have got over a couple more yards. But uh, not an easy kick to make. Still a big one right there. Giving them, uh, again, the three-score lead, 17, uh, you know, you know, put Seneca East back against the wall. And uh, don't forget, um, you know, for the Tigers, you know, they got to start thinking a little bit about 
who's got the ball second half, too. So they even did, though they deferred to the they second half, so that's big for the Tigers. So if they can get a decent return and maybe try to get something going with 30 seconds left, it's a big ask. But if they can, that's great. If not, at least they're not looking at, you know, oh, Colonel Crawford gets the ball to start the second half first as well. Haven't had a lot of success throwing the football tonight. But we'll see the arm of Blake Foose here, potentially. Morton now after the big field goal will tee it up at the 40. You have Fritz, Foose, Gayhart back deep. Morton approaches and he's going to bounce one down Ooh, the field. High bouncer going to be fielded at the 25 yard line. Starts at the center. Uh -huh. Oh, he is wrecked at the 21 yard line. Walker Kramer. Kick coverage by the sophomore brings down Blake Martin. Martin yeah. didn't see it coming. Well, I don't think Martin. He's not really accustomed to kick returning because you could tell when he got the ball in his hand, he almost didn't know what to do. He kind of looked right, looked like he's like, should I sit down? Should I run with it? And when he did, he started running east and west and not north and south. Uh, you know, and if you want to east, run east and west, you better be outrageously fast to get around the corner. And uh, unfortunately for him. He uh, was not able to do so. Colonel Crawford, big hit. Kramer flying down the field, making the stop. Seneca still have a first and 10 at the 24. They'll give him forward progress. Foose on the quarterback iso. Started left. Now he's going to bounce it outside. Good block by the receiver. Foose, though, hit Look at that. and dropped oh. for a one-yard gain. That oh, no, is Brady, Brady Hill. Hill coming downhill. Sorry. You know what? It was funny. Brady Hill just came flying up the field so fast um, that it, it – kind of like made me think you know it's number six number five I was like oh, that's got to be vote coming up that quickly but nope Brady Hill does an outstanding job getting a hold of Foose in the backfield and make it ending up the first half on that play but Jeff said that will be the final play of the first half here from Colonel Crawford the Eagles leading this one 17 to 0 here in week number 11 division six playoffs in region 22 We'll be back with a halftime show brought to you by Ken and Matt, Matt Studer of Ken Standing Scene. Are you ready for the comeback? Man, I wish I was out there. Let's unretire. Why, Matt? Randy Moss. What? Dan Marino? You are right? Hey, Grandpa! Grandpa? I still got it! 22! 22! Do we again? Number 13! Let's see! Hey, hey, hey! I need that senior discount. Mr. Reno, you mind if I take a selfie? Thank you. I'm good right here, bro. <laughs> Fun retirement. Who'd be dumb enough to do that? Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Casasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Casasa. He's going to send a line drive down the field. It'll be fielded on the bounce. That is Schieffer. Schieffer finds a hole at the center. Schieffer turns on the burner. Schieffer could go. He's at the 50, 45. He's got one man to beat. Schieffer with the ball in his left hand. He's going to take it to the house. Winford opens up the second half with the kick return touchdown. <laughs> Take a look at all the action from Friday Night Football right here in North Central Ohio with great analysis, highlights, coach interviews, and so much more every single Friday night right here on the OH Report.
Mr. Schultz decided to break the rules just a little bit with our last piece as it is not technically a boy band. Uma Thurman by Fallout Boy is sure to get you on your feet with its famous catchy bass line and rhythm. He just goes, I'd sell my house to keep him off the Ravens. <laughs> Absolutely.
thank you for your enthusiastic support of all of you musicians tonight. Go Tigers! Hey, Tanya, give me um, a time count when you get a second so I can tell OH Report where we're at. 345 right now. Okay. So, am I right in about three minutes about now? 254, okay. We'll be back in two. Back here on WQEL 92.7 FM, WQEL.com, and live online on the OH Report. It's halftime here from Colonel Crawford High School in week number 11. The Eagles leading the Seneca East Tigers 17-0. And, Jeff, this is the second matchup between these two. And Colonel Crawford has been able to do just about whatever they want. Oh, absolutely. It's not as competitive as the first, more, you know, much less competitive than the first one. Um, where Colonel Crawford had a commanding victory, but at least Seneca was able to keep it competitive at 29-14. In this game, they can't move the ball offensively. Um, only at 20 yards going into halftime. They actually have 20 yards of offense, but 40 yards in penalties at this point in time. Goes to show how much things have unraveled for them throughout the first half. 
And the Tigers will have the ball to start this second half, but they've got to figure something out because Blake, they started the ball game really showing a lot of different looks. Yeah. Nick Parks at quarterback spreading Blake Foose out because they know the defense has to keep him accounted for. Going quads multiple times. Many different formations, but nothing seems to work so far. Yeah, I agree. And, and I think part of it is sometimes coaches get into a, a game where they maybe overthink a little bit where they're like, all right, look, we, we played this team once, we lost to them the first time. So we gotta come up with some new game plan, some new ideas. And part of it was, we're gonna put Nicholas Parks at quarterback, which they've done a little bit throughout the season. And we're gonna move Foose out to the outside. I get what they're trying to do, but at the same point in time, you're taking the ball out of your best playmaker's hands at that point. Um, and that is a challenge. That's a risk. And um, it's a risk that unfortunately for Seneca East didn't pay off in the first half. Certainly the Tigers can get back into this thing only trailing 17 to zero, but they've got to do it soon because that Colonel Crawford offense, they'll, they'll control the ball, yeah. that rushing attack, they'll eat up a lot of clock. I think they got to score on this first drive. I don't think there's any doubt about it. I mean, they're already down three scores. They've got to get back down the two. And you know what, if they can get, uh, get a score and get just one stop, I think that you know they can feel some momentum going and maybe a change. Um, but if they come out and Colonel Crawford gets a three and out or it's a quick, you know, we get another 20 yards of offense out of them, I mean, this this season's going to be over for Seneca East and uh, Colonel Crawford's going to be moving on. Um, again, it was not a super competitive first half, quite frankly. I think for the Tigers, they got to look at the scoreboard and say, this could have been a whole heck of a lot worse. Remember, Colonel Crawford had a turnover in the first half as well, um, and that was on a drive, uh, uh, their first drive of the game where they were moving the ball. So it could very easily be 24-0 right now, um, and even more so, they also had a touch and they got pulled back there that they ended up having to kick a field goal on. So realistically, it should be 28 nothing right now. Colonel Crawford's given them a little bit of gifts to be able to keep them in this football game. And now it's a matter of the Tigers making the adjustments necessary to get themselves back into it. Braxton Morton, kicker, senior kicker for the Colonel Crawford Eagles, nailing a 44-yard field goal in the final minute of the first half. And you don't want to say it took the wind out of the sails of the Tigers, but it really juiced up that Eagle side. Oh, line. absolutely. I think that's the bigger thing is that I think Seneca East could actually walk away from it going, eh, that's worked out in our favor because, you know, a couple plays earlier before it got, you know, got pulled back, we thought we were just letting up a touchdown. Instead, we saved ourselves four points. So, you know, in their mind, it's like, oh, this is a good thing. But ultimately, like you said, when you walk over to the Colonel Crawford sideline, Nobody else in high school football division six in our area at least has a guy who's going out and knocking down 44 yard field goals in a game. It is a unique weapon that it really is not only helpful for coaches, but like you said, it fires up players big time when you know we got the one guy who can go out and get points for us in this situation. And I don't know that he really hit it that clean. No. And he still punched it through from 44 yards out. But that's another thing that Braxton Warren gives you is field position. Yeah. Off the tee, Seneca East has not had great starting field position tonight. And that's one thing on this opening drive. Braxton Morton will kick it deep. And they're going to have to get a nice return or a couple nice plays. As you said, they got to score. They've got to put something together here early or that Eagle offense will grind it out. We yeah. want to touch on some first half scores around the area and the big one. The Winford Royals leading Kenora 14 to seven, and that is huge for Winford. I, I told everybody, I'm like, look, Winford's gonna have a, a lower seed. They're gonna be on the road in the first week, and none of the upper seeds are gonna wanna play them. I, like I, I've been talking about it for weeks. We were talking about it in the press box up here before the game. Their game versus Colonel Crawford a couple of weeks ago here was unbelievable, and I said at the end of it, and I said it for several weeks, I'm a broken record now. If they played 10 times, 10 times, those teams would go 5-5. Five and five. So this is a Colonel Crawford team that went 9-1 and one is the number three seed in this region. And I think Winford probably is as good. So, um, again, these lower-seeded teams, they're going to be looking at that going, man, that team's gotten real good real fast. Um, so not the type of game uh, team that you really necessarily want to see. The other uh, game in the area, um, Galleon, um, in Division Four, playing uh, Oberlin Firelands, and they've got a nice, comfortable lead, 21-0 at this That's point in time. That's, of course, over on WBCO with our friends Jared Moore and Tim Byrie. You can check that one out yeah, sure if did. you would did. like. Did. Getting set for the second half here from Colonel Crawford, but you're listening to the Ken Standing Seam Halftime Show, brought to you by Ken and Matt Studer at Ken Standing Seam. Phone Matt today for the last roof you will ever need, 419 562 
62-75. That's Matt Studer at Ken's standing seam for the last roof you will ever need. And first half stats brought to you by Ken and Matt. And once again for Seneca East, they've just got themselves nine rushing yards, 16 of them by Blake Foos on five uh, carries, and then it's Nicholas Parks, two carries, negative seven yards. So seven carries, nine yards. Foos throwing the fo football has not completed a pass yet. He's 0 for 4. Parks is 1 for 2 for 11 yards to Taylor Young. So as a team, 1 for 6, only 20 yards of offense. They also have four penalties for 40 yards. And four for drop passes. Exactly. Exa you know, and for Colonel Crawford, they haven't even thrown the football yet. Haven't needed to. It has been super easy for them with Micah Thomas, 21 carries, 131 yards, touchdown run for him. Connor McMichael, 8 carries, 87 yards and a touchdown. Trevor Vogt, 5 carries, three yards so as a team at this point in time 34 carries 221 yards two touchdowns on offense they do have 40 yards of penalties on four penalties overall so Senekis will start the second half with the football and needing some life out of their leaders get back in this game make it competitive they they have the guys to do it but they got to catch the football they've got to set up blocks on the on the front uh front line and let Blake Foose be Blake Foos, but that's of course we'll see against this very tough Colonel Crawford defense. Second half coming up on WQEL 92.7 FM as well as streaming live online on the OH Report. We'll be back with the third quarter right after this. I wish I was out there. Right here in North Central Ohio with great analysis, highlights, coach interviews, and so much more. Every single Friday night, right here on the OH Report. Seneca East Tigers winner of this one will play the winner of the number six seed Toledo Ottawa Hills and number 11 Castalia Margareta but Colonel Crawford with a three score lead 17 to 0 over N10 rival Seneca East yeah I'll tell you right now and uh, as we just said it is going to be really interesting uh, to see what Coach Phillips is going to be able to dial up here. Because one of the things that we you mentioned before the game is that this is a Seneca East team that has made the playoffs nine years in a row. I mean, uh, the longest streak in the N10. Several years ago, they were in the state Final Four. Now, you know, that was good five, six years ago now. Different types of bodies, different people, totally different team. But the reality is, is that... You know, Coach Phillips knows what he's doing, and offensively, he's really got his head on that. But, uh, you know, so far in this game, it hasn't really gone his way. And it's going to be really intriguing to see what kind of adjustments he was able to make at halftime to be able to open things up a little bit against this Colonel Crawford defense that's giving them fits tonight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we saw him change it up with Parks in the first, uh, in their opening drive. But we'll see what halftime adjustments Coach Ed Phillips and that staff can make here as we start this third quarter. They will have the football. Foose. Fritz and Gayhart back deep for the Tigers. 
Actually, I don't think Foose is back nope. there this time. Is that pa that's Parks? Yep. Got Parks Dixon in the middle. Oh, Dixon. I yep. apologize. And like you said, Gayhart over on the far side. And again, so there's a there's a change right there. Yeah, and and right away I, I'll say this, you know, Colonel Crawford. We we mentioned it all throughout the year. The Eagles are are just. He got such an advantage with Morton not only in the field goal kicking team game but especially in kickoffs. He he's going to drop it down to the five yard line basically on every kick. Puts his leg into not this one time, and it'll be fielded at the 15. Still a pretty good kick in Division Six. Far side return gets an opening. Gets yep. up over the 35 to the 36 yard line. That's Jackson Gayhart. Great return and we talked about it. Field position is big. Gayhart. Does a big uh, has a big play there for Seneca East. Yeah, Morton kind of topped it a little bit, you know, so um, didn't get a hold of all of it the way he normally does, and uh, still went down to the 15-yard line. So <laughs> goes to show you what we're talking about. Every other everybody else has guys who you're hoping get it down to the 15. For him, it's a bad kick. Division six, Region 22 action here tonight on WQEL and the OH Report. Tiger offense on the field, led by senior quarterback Blake Foose. Double tight. Man goes in motion. That's Martin. They're going to go underneath shovel. Or excuse me, that's Taylor Young. Oh, he's Young got it. Up the sideline. Young in open space. He's in a foot race, and he is hit over there. But a big play. That's exactly what the Tigers needed to open this thing up. Get a little fire going for the Seneca East faithful. Oh, they needed that one. 43 yards on the run by Taylor Young. Again, just kind of doing him on the end around. A little jet sweep around the edge. Use his speed. And, uh, you know, Colonel Crawford. Kind of, I think they thought he was going to be a decoy, and they did not follow him. He got to the corner, open field run, and uh, you can see Taylor Young's speed. Parks, lone receiver to the right side. Wing underneath, they go same, same play. play. Back to not Young that this time. time, no room. They'll give him forward progress, a gain of a yard, maybe two. A little slower developing that time. I mean, you know, you can kind of see... A little hesitation. Foose was sort of running in the opposite direction like he was going to be running the football. But he slowed down to make sure that he could give a good pitch. And when he slowed down, the defense realized what he was doing. And they all stopped and changed direction. So the Tigers looking at second and eight in the third quarter here from Crawford. Young wide right, Parks wide left. Foose in a pistol formation with Gayhart behind him. Parks comes in motion, left to right. He's going to turn, give to Gayhart. Gayhart straight up the gut on an ISO. And another gain of two. It'll be third and six. Actually, I was a gain of just one. I was pretty impressed by Gayhart earlier in the year for a, a freshman. Mm -hmm. um, I thought he ran, runs hard. He's pretty athletic. Um, not always the easiest to bring down. But the difference is now he's a freshman going against a 9-1 third-ranked team in the region team. It's a, it's a tougher uh, matchup than uh, what we saw him earlier this year when he was going against some of the, the middle and lower teams in the N10. A bunch quads to the left side. Tigers moving left to right on your radio dial. Foose alone in the backfield. They're going to go bubble screen over on the left into the quads and a gain of about five, but he's still going to be short of a first down. Taylor Young again. That's, they love to get it to Taylor Young out in space. Again, reason why his numbers throughout the season on receptions is outstanding. I mean, but, you know, he ended the, the year averaging about 10 yards a catch, but about midway through the year, he was only averaging like six and a half, seven. You know, I mean, it, a lot of it was in the back half trying to get him downfield a little bit more, but everything was short passes, bubble screens, just trying to use his speed. Let's see what they can do here on fourth and four. Obviously, four down territory for the Tigers, down three scores. Motion man, it's going to be Foose keeping it. Foose hitting the backfield, he's going to be dropped. No first down as the Eagle defense stands. McMichael in there and a slew of other Eagles in on the stop. A little surprising that they decided to try to run the football from that distance on fourth down against such a good Colonel Crawford defense. Again, remember, they haven't run the ball effectively outside of that one Taylor Young run. They have not had a good run really throughout the game. Seven and yards at the break. Exactly. Uh, so uh, the, the, the fact that they decided on fourth and three to try to run the football was a little shocking. So the turnover on downs gives it back to Colonel Crawford. 9.50 to go in the third quarter. Eagles will send a receiver to the left. Vote at quarterback with Thomas and Michael on each hip. 
Shotgun snap goes to McMichael. McMichael shakes an arm tackle, uh. gets by another one. He's still driving the feet and pushes the pile up to the 20-yard line. So it could have been a one-yard loss. Ends up being a gain of five. Actually, they'll call it six. Second and four coming. You know, he's a textbook example of why you tell running backs to run hard and to lift weights mm -hmm. because – he does not go down on an arm tackle. Like, they get him in the backfield. They're just not hitting him square, and he just keeps the legs churning. And uh, sure enough, like you said, should have been a loss. Ends up being a positive gain for Crawford. Now empty backfield for Vogt. Tight end and a wing left. He's going to run that way. Vogt turns the corner up to the second level. Vogt's going to have a first down up to the 27-yard line. I got to be honest with you. A little misdirection quarterback counter. Uh, you know, it was six yards, and it was a pretty solid run overall. But you can see the way Seneca East is flowing to Trevor Vogt. They're really fearful of him getting in the open field because I think they know nobody catches him in the open field. But unfortunately, they're focusing on him so much that it's opening up everything, especially for Thomas and McMichael. Seneca East will put six down linemen, six across the front, and this time they're going to bottle him up, but still a gain of two. Justin Ryder in there, Parks in there. Also, yeah. Blake Martin on the stop. Yeah, once again, McMichael taking the carry there. But as compared to his normal runs to the outside, again, that time they're keeping him in between the tackles. And again, I like that not only for this game, but I like putting it on film. Remember, they're going to face a team that's never seen them before next week, and that team's going to look at this game. And they're going to say, all right, this guy, he sometimes goes outside, but he sometimes goes inside. We're going to have to be aware of all of it. I'd follow that big left side of that line for Darn sure. Right. Clearing the road. Foose showing blitz up the middle. They're going to go to the fullback. Thomas trying to bounce and outside. And Blake Foose, ball hockey middle linebacker, shoots through the A-gap, makes a stop on McMike, or excuse me, Thomas. Micah Thomas. Yeah, I, actually, I'll be honest. I, I think that that's been probably Seneca East's most successful play defensively is blitzing Foose through because he seems to be one of the few guys who can tackle these guys one-on-one. -on -one. Um, most of the other defensive backs and linebackers seem to kind of need help, um, whereas Foose, if he seems to be able to get in there and gets in the backfield, gets a hold of Thomas or McMichael, he, he seems to be able to get him down. Foy goes wide right. Receiver below is to the left with a wing inside of him. Vote being pressured, now flushed. Left side, Vote sets up and padded behind the line of scrimmage. That's a big play by Justin Ryder. Yeah. And a huge third down stop there by Seneca East in Crawford territory. And the Eagles are going to be forced to punt. And that's what they need to do. They need to put Colonel Crawford in third down and eight. You know, now in the first half they did it a couple of times and Crawford still got it because they just kept running the football. But here they're back in their own territory. When it was in the first half... It was third down and eight, but they were in Seneca East territory, so they were like, well, we're going to go for it on fourth down. We're going to still run the football. Here, they're basically saying, let's make them pass, and you can see that's where Colonel Crawford's not the most comfortable. Boos and Parks back deep. Nice punt there. Great punt. Going to send Parks Oof. running backwards and takes a big Colonel Crawford roll, and they're just going to have to back away as that one's going to be inside the 10-yard line, a 62-yard punt. Man. All the way back in field position once again in favor of the Eagles. What a leg. Yeah, powerful line drive punt there. Didn't have a ton of air over on it, but he just kicked it so, you know, so straight. And it went over the returner's head by 10 yards. So he can't back up and make the catch. And then he got the friendly roll. Parks, for a second, thought about running back and picking it up. But he realized this is not going to be a good idea. I'm just going to have to let it go. And Seneca East, despite a, a pretty good situation there where I thought they were going to get the ball in decent field position, is now back against the end zone. First and 10 from the nine. Foose in the offense on the field. They'll bunch quads left side. Foose looking. There it is. Space. Not there. Now across nope. the middle. There open. And that is right. No, Blake Parks. Martin. Oh, no. That's, I apologize. It's Parks. Yep, that's Parks. Big post route from Nick Parks. Foose wasn't his initial read. Nope. But made the adjustment and hits Parks on a big play. Yeah, 34 yards right there by Foos. He had a giant hole on the, the right side. I thought he was going to run with it. He didn't because he saw Parks getting free. 
Hurry up offense, Foose trying to run him over. Able to get positive yards, a gain of five by Blake Foose. Tackle made by Brady Hill. See, that's what they haven't really done that much in this game, is just let Foose run the football that much on first down. Get them some positive yards. Get them moving the sticks, you know, where they're not constantly in third down and 12. Make it third down and two. Tight quads left, shovel pass over to... This time it's Young. Yep, Young you got fighting it. for the sticks, and he's got enough. He reached out. They, they, man, they brought it back a little bit. I thought he had it for sure. Right. Now it's going to be kind of a little more contingent on the spot. Uh, we both have a pretty good look at it here, and I, official's going to take a timeout. Maybe bring the sticks out, but it looks like he's got it. Yeah, the way he landed it, you know, he. Again, the ball kind of came out at the end. Now, maybe he was already down. Um, official had a better view of when the knee hit the ground. But still, pretty darn good uh, play right there. And, you know, for Seneca East, they're getting some movement finally in this half. I mean, the first drive stalled. But, uh, you know, here they are. Three plays on this drive, and they're possibly looking at their second first down. Halftime speech, definitely holding some weight with the Tigers. And clear adjustments. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's, yeah. you know... I uh, I think sometimes guys need a little kick in the butt, but sometimes a coach needs a little adjustment in terms of the game plan that they put together coming into a game. That will be enough for a fresh set of downs. So Seneca East with their most promising drive of the night. Comes in this third quarter, 5.57 to go in the third period. You're listening to WQEL 92.7 and... Streaming live online on the OH Report. Tiger offense back out on the field. They will go empty backfield. Quads to the right, tight to the line of scrimmage. Foose fakes the underneath shovel. Has pressure. Parks escaping wow. and great ball hawking ability. Pass was complete, but McMichael right on the hip of Parks. Oh, that play was a disaster in so many ways. And the fact that Seneca East even got one yard on it was kind of a miracle. Because defender comes through in the backfield. Foose is in a lot of trouble. It was a missed block there. Um, you know, the running back who's supposed to come over and pick up the blitzer just let him go by. Foose had to just kind of sidearm and get it out out of his hands. It could have been potentially been a disaster. There's a lot of black jerseys around. Parks made a great catch, but McMichael all over him. Low snap. Foose able to handle it. He's going to be flushed. He's going to run it right side, lowers the shoulder, uh -huh. and he won that battle. Yep. Foose Brady picking Hill. up a couple extra on Brady Hill. And it'll be third and about three. Foose, once again, he's not going to run around you. He is going to run over you. He's not ready for season, the season to be done. But that's what I think they got to just tell Blake Foose to do. It's like, look, we're going to put you in some passing downs, but if you see some gaps for you to run the football, take it. Mm -hmm. Go and run. Um, it's okay because that's where we're going to be happy with you. It's a one-hopper. Low throw intended for Young, and it's incomplete. Yep. Fourth down and about four. See, I would have liked to see them try to maybe run the football with Foose again there, see if they can have gotten some yards on third down. So now on a fourth down, maybe you only need a yard or so. Um, if you're still, if you didn't get any yards, you know you're throwing the football. But, uh, you know, now they're in a scenario. They ran it last time here, and it didn't work out. Ball in Eagle territory, empty backfield for Foose. Three to the left. Foose going to throw. It Stop is. route. It's complete. Parks shakes the defender. Parks still going, fighting. Parks in the 20, and he's going to be flushed out of bounds at the 19-yard line. But Foose finding a soft spot in the defense, settling in, and then breaking a tackle and picking up a big first down. But see, this is what I, I was a little surprised that wasn't happening at the beginning of the game. Uh, you know, they were trying to be a little cute at times and it just was unnecessary it's not really you don't have to do that against Colonel Crawford they'll give you short passes mm -hmm. um, just got to go out and take them low snap Foose hauls it in crossing route great catch in traffic yep. bodies all over them Parks. but Again, Parks, Parks gets five Nick Parks the sophomore having a big game here great defensive player and now showing what he can do offensively Catching the one in traffic there, gain of four and a half. Yep. Same formation, quads left, empty backfield for Foos. Caden Fritz to the right side, quarterback keeper trying to bounce. And Foos is going to be wrapped up, but gains two inside 
the 15 down to the 14 yard line. And once again, little kind of an ankle tackle right there by uh, Reber. Does a nice job getting him down to the ground, but you know what, if, if I'm Foos and I'm in that situation, you gotta realize it's like he tries to bounce it and I uh, just couldn't, didn't have the speed to quite get there. And I think when you realize that that's not going to be in that situation, you got to tell your quarterback, you know, this is your senior year and backs against the wall. Lower the shoulder, get us some yards. You know, just try to get one, two yards if you have to. Four receivers below us. He'll motion Parks into a wing. Parks will stay in a block. Foose sets up. Backside post is there. Oh, he got and it. It's caught. No, he oh. dropped it. Coming down. It was intended over there, I think, for Bryler Beamer. And yep. Beamer went up in traffic, brought it in, but couldn't complete the catch. You, you know what's funny is the defenders, two defenders there, and I thought, oh, that you don't want to go there. It's these double coverage. But they both got behind Beamer. So he was able to get in front of him, use his height. He kind of popped up in the air. Um, you know, the nice little, uh, little uh, vertical to get over the top of everybody, too. And uh, I thought it was going to be a touchdown. Hit him right in the hands. Defenders out of position. Beamer at 6'1", 180. Tough to cover on the outside. Has speed to go with the side. They're going to go back to that area. And Foose, nope. flush left. Foose going to run it. Foose trying for the oh, first down. Where are they going to go the out of bounds? Is going to mark him shy. Oh, he missed it by a yard. Big stop by Crawford. So a turnover on downs. Back to the Eagles. Foose did everything he could. Yep. Trying to extend that football, but the official over there didn't give him benefit of the doubt, and it's going to be Colonel Crawford football. Flat ran out of real estate. That's all it was. Mm -hmm. Simple case of running to that edge, trying to get there, and uh, just couldn't quite get around that corner. 3.37 to go, third quarter, and Colonel Crawford will have the football back. And we've had more change of possession yep. here in this third quarter than almost the entire first half. Absolutely. Well, you know, Seneca East is moving the football. They just can't get it in the end zone. And again, this is who I thought Colonel Crawford was defensively, is that they, they'll get let you move the ball a little bit, but once they get inside that 20, they tighten up. It gets really hard, and uh, that's what we're seeing. Tigers showing blitz. Crawford's going to run it on a sweep. That's to the vote. left side, vote, stiff arm, and mm. brought down again by Nick Parks. The safety is all over the place. But a gain of 15. Yeah, but, you know, still getting around the edge. He used his speed, and uh, that's a great play. Uh, Parks, uh, you know, can't can't credit him enough. But, uh, you know, defense has to try to get a hold of vote a little bit earlier than that because you get him in the open field, he is super-duper dangerous. Maybe the most dangerous player we see throughout the year. Fast is an understatement. Yep. And, again, that's the reason why nobody wants to kick to him in punt returns and kick return situations. Foy goes in motion, but instead they go to the fullback. He slipped yep. at the line of scrimmage, so Thomas. it'll be maybe a gain of a foot. Yeah, Micah. Thomas trying to change directions. He saw the hole. Yep. And, again, we'll see if Crawford continues to keep Baker in there in quarterback. Nope, it looks like this is where they will potentially make the adjustment. Oh, no, he's still second, out there. Okay, never mind. Second and nine. It was Lucas Foy who came out. It's number seven, not number nine. So, again, Vote going to continue to stay out at receiver while uh, Baker plays the quarterback role. Vote goes wide to the right. Seneke showing man-to-man -man on him. They're going to throw to him. going to stay in. Goes the Vote over the center. Post route, and he put <laughs> too much on it. But good coverage over there by Bryler Beamer. He had backside help from uh. Fritz. Wouldn't have mattered, though, if that ball was put on the right spot. I mean, he, he had him by a step, and it wasn't a fancy route. It was a, qu a, a minimal skinny a minimal skinny post. Mm -hmm. It was basically just, I'm going to run to the middle of the field as fast as I possibly can, and we'll see if you can keep up with me. They will sub out Baker. It'll be vote here on third and nine. The clock stopped at 2.22 to go third quarter. Motion man, right to left is Foy. Fake the handoff to him. Boat's going to throw. Looking back side over the oh, middle. Wide, wide open. open. Pass is caught in Seneke's territory. That's Foy. And he goes down at the 40-yard line. Beautiful ball. And Foy was all alone in the center of the field. Yep, they, they lost him on the play. And, uh... Again, you know, when, when Vote has got time and he's got receivers that open, he's going to complete those passes. I mean, you got to put pressure on him and you got to cover those receivers. If you do that, um, then obviously the passing game is Colonel Crawford's offensive weakness. But when he's got space like he had right there and he's got a receiver that's open by 15 yards on both sides, he's going to complete it all day. Tight end on both sides. 
Two receivers left. Vote going to fake the handoff, run it himself. Quarterback keeper up the gut, gets to the 35, maybe the 34-yard line. That's where they'll spot him on forward progress. So good gain on first down. Hicks on the stop for Seneca East. Crawford going to try and melt this third quarter all the way down. 90 yep. seconds to go, and they lead at 17-0. And quite honestly, one more score, um, assuming it's a touchdown, probably puts it out of reach for Seneca East with only one quarter left. So this is big. Vote will hand off. It is Thomas. Thomas and a nice tackle made in the middle. Will Bischoff, maybe. No, 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 that was Foos. Short gain, third and three. 60 seconds left in the third. Mm -hmm. Third and very manageable for this Colonel Crawford offense. They've yep. been, I mean, the first half, it was all Eagles. Seneca's showing life here, but they need a big stop. The timeout no. going to be called by Coach Bruner. Yep. He'll take his first of the second half. 45 seconds to go in the third. We'll take a break as well. You're listening to WQEL and the OH Report. Uh, just a 30 here. Are you ready for the comeback? He's going to send a line drive down the field. It'll be fielded on the bounce. That is Schieffer. Schieffer finds a hole at the center. Schieffer turns on the burners. Schieffer could go. He's at the 50, 45. He's got one man to beat. Schieffer with the ball in his left hand. He's going to take it to the house. Winford opens up the second half with a kick return touchdown. This one will move on to play the winner of Ottawa Hills and Margareta. And that score comes in at the half. Ottawa Hills 28, Margareta 7. Yeah, Ottawa Hills 9-1 and one on the season. Um, only lost one game, but it was in, to an undefeated team out of Michigan. So it was kind of a tough tough to kind of get a real evaluation because they were a six seed at 9-1. and one, So the schedule was, you know, you just can't really tell sometimes with the teams that are a little bit further away of exactly how good they are. Full house for the Eagles. They go to Thomas. Thomas, Thomas oh. lowering the shoulder. Picks up a first down inside the 25 to the 24-yard line. Just another power run by Thomas, lowering the shoulder, running somebody over at the end. Nine-yard pickup, again brought by, brought down by Parks. A couple other Tigers in on that stop, including Blake Martin. One other uh, score to update everyone on: Northmore playing Cole Grove tonight, and they are tied up at 22 in the third quarter. Northmore, a program that's definitely turned it around in recent years. Darn right. Tight end and a wing left, tight end right, two backs behind. Vote sets up to throw, has a time, there he is. and delivered. Oh. oh, through the hands of the intended receiver, incomplete. And it was Caden Bruner cutting over the middle of the field. It was there, and that, I don't know that he would have got in. No, I don't know either. But it would have definitely moved the chains and got him in the red zone. Unfortunately for Caden Bruner, it's the drop of the pass, but more importantly, he's got to go home and hear about it. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, <laughs> you know, it's a. It's a tough, a tough exactly. You don't get away from it when the kid. I mean, we talk about a lot about about you know having parents who will just have a conference, but when your parents, the coach, it's even worse. Second and ten. Foil motion out wide left. They're gonna go to the it's back. McMichael. It's McMichael over the twenty and pushing down to the fifteen yard line. He has broken more tackles tonight. Yep. Just will not go down to an arm tackle. And, and he's also. You know what, he just makes the other team work because he sits behind blocks and he waits and he's patient until he sees his opening and then he goes. That's the end of the third quarter here in North Robinson. The Eagles in control and driving. They lead it 17 to zero. Fourth quarter when we come back. Are you ready for the comeback? Fielded on the bounce. That is Schieffer. Schieffer finds a hole at the center. Schieffer turns on the burners. Schieffer could go. He's at the 50, 45. He's got one man to beat. Schieffer with the ball in his left hand. He's going to take it to the house. Winford opens up the second half with a kick return touchdown. Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Casasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Casasa.
there was several games uh, to, in Tenora over the years. Yeah. Was there multiple times? I think the last time they met so. was 2014. Yeah. And Tenora won that game. They shut out the Royals. Full house again for Crawford. Vote fakes the handoff, flushed right side, open across oh. the middle, and threw it behind the antenna receiver incomplete. Vote mad at was himself. Micah that time. Thomas, I believe. No, it was McMichael. Vote Ryan McMichael. Ryan. Ryan. Yep. Number 19. Yeah, and Vote knew he had him too. He just put it a little bit too far behind him. So incomplete on first down, brings up second and 10 as we start this fourth quarter. Eagles won't huddle. Check the wristbands. They'll line up McMichael on the left side. Thomas on the right hip of Vote. Shift the wing right to left. Blitz up the middle, and they get it to Thomas. Thomas oh, good through cut. the second level. Thomas keeping the feet going. Thomas will go down at the six-yard line. But again, the type of that run. Blitz just a little late. Yep. The type of run, though. That uh, makes it a third down and two. They're so close. If they don't get the first down or in the end zone this time, they're going to go for it on fourth down. They're just so close at this point in time. I mean, Seneca East really need to get him in the backfield. Third and two. A score here could close the book on the Tigers. I think it does. If they get in the end zone, I think that's going to do it because they won't have enough time. They'll down, be down four scores. Two backs and a three-point. They go to Thomas. Thomas gets by one. Ooh. And he might be shy. No, I don't think he got it. Yep. Yeah, he will be shy of the line to gain. They got in the backfield. They were coming full house to try mm -hmm. to get him to make sure he didn't get, get the first down there. So now it'll be fourth and three with a loss of a yard. Yep. Crawford will sub in a fullback, Tyler Smith. Loss yep. Caden Bruner will check out. And quite honestly, I think... Looks like they're going to go for yeah, it. Yeah, there's no real reason to kick a field goal because Seneca East isn't going to do that. If they're going to score, they're going to score three touchdowns, so the field goal won't mean as much. Tigers showing heat again. They go to McMichael. McMichael inside the five, fighting for the goal line. They and got he's it. the end zone touchdown. Oh, excuse me. That was Micah Thomas. Yep. 21-22, man. Throwing yeah, absolutely. Bunched up jerseys. Don't blame it on that. Uh, that's, I, I'm good with that as an excuse. I'll tell you what. Micah Thomas, big run right there. Got through the initial hole, and uh, again, great blocking. And then when he just gets close to the end zone, he's just so big and physical, it becomes a good luck to get him down type game. Sophomore finds the end zone again. Braxton Morton on for the extra point. And the Tigers just couldn't come up with the stop they needed there on fourth down. Extra point is up, it is good. And now, with 10.28 to go here at Colonel Crawford, the Eagles leading the Tigers 24-0. to zero. We'll be back with the Tigers in the football right after this. Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Casasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Casasa. Morton has it teed up at the 40. It will send it deep, leading 24 to 0. End over end kick. Going to be fielded by Gayhart at the 15 yard line. Started left, goes back center of the field, and he's going to be brought down at the 15 yard line. Ran about 10 yards east and west, and that coverage team by the Eagles smothered him up. As uh, you always say, the only time you can ever go east and west is you better be a whole lot faster than everybody that you're playing against and have some great blocking. And uh, unfortunately, every time Seneca East has tried to do that in this game, it has not been successful. Tiger offense, though, showing life here in this second half. 
but trailing 24 to zero, they need a sustaining, sustainable touchdown drive here. Uh, and they need it fast. The clock's working against them as much as the scoreboard now. Blake Foos in that offense, trots back out on the field. He'll be joined by Gayhart in the backfield. Three receivers to his left, one to the right. That's Fritz. Foos lifts his leg, has the snap, goes to Gayhart. Big hole up the middle. Gayhart ran through one arm tackle, then gets brought down by a slew of Eagles at the 25 yard line. Gain of seven. Yep. Also, another score update from the end 10. Carey beating Crestview 29 to 6. Third quarter score there. Carey might not have the weapons and the size that they did when they won state a few years ago, but still posing a tough matchup to anybody. They're just so physical, yeah, so absolutely. big. Pass complete by Foose over here to Taylor Young. That'll move the chain, so he needed three, got four. Vote on the stop for the Eagles, but the clock continuing to move here in the fourth quarter, 9.35 and counting. Tigers will go quads right this time. Fritz, lone receiver to the left. Foose has the snap, going to roll right. Eagles only bring three. Foose going to air it out over there. Pass complete. At the 49-yard line, Foose put it on the numbers, and that's to Young again. Yep, Taylor Young consistently getting himself open down the field. Young creating space there, and Foose and put it right on him. That's it. I was going to say the pass is, was pretty good, too. Let's not undershoot that. Back to Gayhart. Gayhart on the ISO. Flag comes in. First flag of the second half. Yep. Gain of six, but we'll see. Yeah, a lot of sideline warning. A little like. bit of a messy first half, but uh, warning is nope, a sideline warning, so no big deal. Um, but a six-yard run right there by Gayhart. Second and four, nine, 12 to go. Tigers huddle, the, hurry to the line. Trips left, Gayhart on the left hip of Foose. Low snap, he's gonna stay in the block. Foose wants to throw it. Unleashes, low Ooh. pass to Fritz. Did he pick it off the turf? He did. He got it, nice catch. Foose on a curl route, hauls it in. That's once again another example of Crawford will give you that underneath. Yeah, absolutely. Underneath pass. Especially when they're up like this, but I mean, I'm telling you, for teams that are playing Colonel Crawford, that's the way you can move the ball on them. You just gotta figure it out after the 20 after that, and there's a jump off sides. I know, no, that's going to be. Parks moved yeah, first. Parks moved yeah. first. Like, no, it was on Seneca East. Start. Excuse me. I mean, just misspoke. But, yeah, no doubt about that. That one's going to be a false start on. Boost wanted it on two. Yep. Parks was eight yards down the field before exactly. anybody else. He was, was playing He was playing Canadian football rules right there. <laughs> Get a little head start. Yep. Back him up five. First and 10 from the 41. Boost alone in the backfield. Eagles bring four, pressure oh, all over Foose, turns, coming back to left side, grabbed by the jersey, he's going to sling it. That will probably yeah. be... Fritz is there. Yeah. So they're going to get away with it. I mean, it could have been an intentional gro grounding, but boy, they were all over him, though. I mean, Great he... blitz. The delayed blitz was all over Foose. When he saw that Foose was going to stay in and throw it, yep. linebacker came in hot, and he was never picked up. Yeah, and then even as, you know, he was just trying to kind of run away from guys, you know, he turns back the other way, and he's like, oh, my gosh, there's another defender. I mean, they just keep coming. And they're only doing three four-man rushes, but that's enough. Boos going to run it this time. Flag comes in. That'll be a hold. Yep, hold, bringing it back. Nose tackle was wrapped up. Brady Hill on the stop. Got Hill on the tackle, but that'll come back. So another penalty against the Tigers. We'll stop it briefly with 8.26 to go. And the winner will move on and play Ottawa Hills or Castilla Margareta. Yep, a 10-yard on the hold, so spot, uh, from the spot of the foul. Tell you what, now they're back in their own territory again. 
Ball will be at the Seneca East 49. And I did like the play call in, in terms of initial design. It was they're only got a three down lineman. Everybody else is dropping way back. Mm -hmm. So just do a direct snap to your, your quarterback foots and let him run. And, you know, he's probably going to get 10 yards. Wash the line to one side. Exactly. A hole. Sets up the throw. Foose, stop route, complete over there to Parks. Parks at the 40, they get a big chunk back. They'll give him forward progress to the 40 yard line. A frozen rope there by Blake Foose. And the connection between him and Parks has been strong tonight, yep. but. Both Young and Parks have five catches tonight. Uh, Kid and Fritz the only one with a catch. But they got five receivers out there, but those are the two guys doing most of the damage. Foose sets up at the 45, Parks in motion. They'll flatten out, they'll sling it to him. Parks with some room to move. Parks lowers the shoulder and gets to the 30 yep. of Colonel Crawford. So they get a lot of those penalty yards back. Mm -hmm. They'll actually give him past the 30. Yeah, it was a good play. 29. It's so going to be fourth, fourth down and short. short here. Yeah. Seneke, of course, will go for it. Two and a half yards. Yep. But 7.25 and counting. Season dwindling for the Tigers. Yep, a lot of time to get this play in. They know that this is it, but still, uh, I don't know if maybe they're just kind of realizing we just want to get points on the board here because they wasted a good 20, 25 seconds to get the play in. Back on the left side of Foos. Flushed right, uh, and a throw over receiver, the receiver fell. fell. Foos had pressure in his face. They were coming at him. Well, that, that right tackle, that... Yeah. Left end is so far outside, the right tackle is trying to just shove him out there. Yeah. But Foos kind of ran right into it. Well, and that's what it is. I mean, they're doing kind of a wide pass rush because um, they want to just keep him contained inside. So it's basically you keep your interior defensive lineman just bull rushing up the middle. Watch for him to run if he does and he gets by you. Well, the interior middle linebackers are sitting. They're dropping back in coverage, but they're watching him. They're spying him the entire way. And the ends are making sure that he doesn't get around the edges. So, Winford fumbles on their own three-yard line, turning it over. Uh. Tenora makes the Royals pay. And a two-yard touchdown run makes it 21-14 with a minute to go in the third quarter. There's Crawford with the Baker. football and trying for Baker. Incomplete. Well, Baker thinks he picked it off the turf. Well, it was Baker made the throw to or, vote, yeah, that vote. is. I'm sorry. It got deflected, yeah. apparently, and they're going to say it did go on the ground. So, Update from Brian Hemminger, or that update courtesy of Brian Hemminger. Yeah, and again, that one still in the third quarter, so... Mm -hmm. Still time for Winford, but again, we've mentioned this all year. They're just not built to come from behind. They're built to be ahead and make the other team play catch up. Baker in at quarterback and a handoff. Thomas. Thomas started outside, then cut it up as he turned the corner and picks up eight up to the Eagle 37. 640 and counting, third and two for the Eagles. Over on WBCO, Jared Moore and Tim Byrie bringing you the Galleon Tigers. And Firelands, Firelands. Yep, out of Oberland area. Mm -hmm. Of course, Davy Jones back at station control getting set for playoff edition of the Friday Night Phone Board. Which means extra pizza. Heat coming up the middle for Seneca East. He gets there through. Foose all Boos. over it. Read it like a book. Big stop on that fourth down. That'll create fourth down. Oh, yes, yeah. I apologize. So now the Eagles will punt. Man, they're just the clock all over not in them. favor of Seneca East. There's Blake Foose, just willpower, not wanting this season to end. He will drop back alongside Nick Parks. You know, we talked about Blake Foose so much because we were just like, he's, he's you know, 1,000-yard rusher, 1,000-yard passer. We talked about him on offense, but he's been their best defensive player tonight. Mm -hmm. um, been in the backfield an awful lot on those blitzes. Potentially the high school football final player of the year. Dual threat guy, over 27 oh. yards total. Parks. 2,700 yards. Yep. There's Parks coming up, lowers the boom. Parks, he delivered the paint on that play. 
Got it up over the 40 to the 42 yard line. Senekis will have it back, but 5.15 to go in the ball game. Yeah, I'm glad I don't have to make that decision. <laughs> you, you figure out who to pick. <laughs> A lot of great performers in the, in the local area and certainly be an extended meeting as we try and figure that out. Of course, check out the high school mm -hmm. football final on the Facebook pages of Mizzick Miller. Primal Insurance, Raw Supply, First Federal Community Bank, and WQEL. Who's certainly a candidate, 2,700 yard, 2, yards from scrimmage. And how do you pick somebody from Colonel Crawford? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Three guys could do it there. Oh, Ooh. what a ball from Foose, but the receiver couldn't quite get it up, hands up there. That's Taylor Young. Tight coverage by Vote. Yeah, Foose just so comfortable with Young that he didn't even care that he was in between three black jerseys. He's just like, I'm slinging it right in the middle of it. And that's why he plays center field in the spring. He yeah. has a rocket for an arm. Tigers will hurry some guys out. Clock has stopped, 5-11 to go. Trips left, two to the right for Foos in an empty backfield. Sets up at his 36. Eagles bring three. Foos going to swing it deep. He's got a guy. And nice oh, catch. reaching out and a fingertip catch made inside the 20-yard line. Parks. No, I'm sorry, not Parks. That was, yeah, Braden Robinson. Robinson with his first catch, one-on-one -on -one coverage out there and brought it in with his fingertips. That's exactly what it was. Saw it right from the get-go. I was like, man, he's got a step, but did he overthrow him? And he didn't. He got it dropped right into it. Who's going to keep it? Runs it outside, gets by one defender, falls forward over the second. They'll keep the clock rolling, but Foos with a gain of about eight. For Seneca East, they just got to get some points on the board here. And uh, obviously with the clock working against them, they better do it fast. Eagle defense certainly wants to keep the shutout. Yep. He'll give you the underneath throws. Across the middle of the parks. Parks yeah, inside the five. In. He threw him forward, but the nope. knee was one down at the one-yard line. Clock will keep rolling. It'll stop briefly but they, for the first but down. But they can do a quick snap and run straight ahead with their quarterback here. I mean, Foose keeps it, trying. Oh, the ball came out. Uh, the side official but comes in. in. Eagles are saying he fumbled it, or it, at the very least was stopped short, but I think the officials will keep the touchdown. But they're going to talk about it. Yep, they're marking it as kick the yep. extra point. Touchdown, Blake Foose. And I do the like the quarterback wasn't going to be denied on that play. Yeah, just run it in fast. Don't don't let the defense set up. He probably stretched across a little too far and lost possession of the football for a second, but not before he already crossed the line. Gets just enough. 421 to go in the ball game. It's 24-6 Crawford. Foose will set up two. in the gun. Gayhart, right side. Foose lost the snap, picks it up, throws it in the flats. It that is Gayhart. complete. Gayhart on the grass route gets in for the two point conversion. So the Tigers need a lot of help, but they're not done yet. Trailing 24 to 8. 421 remaining on the clock here in North Robinson, but the Eagles will have it back when we come back. Are you ready for the comeback? Man, I wish I was out there. Let's unretire. Why, Matt? Randy Moss. What? Dan Marino? You're right. Hey, Grandpa. Grandpa. I still got it. 22. 22. Hey, 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 I need that senior discount. That's, that's the case. Mr. Reno, you mind if I take a selfie? Thank you. I'm good right here, bro. <laughs> On retirement, who'd be dumb enough to do that? Across the board, they 
make it three scores, and they connected on the first two-point conversion. So it's kind of a big deal. But again, that sort of looms why how Morton's field goal at 44 yards was such a big deal. Mm -hmm is uh, they're going to make Seneca East have to convert every two-point conversion if they can even get the ball. Onside kick attempt is covered up by Connor McMichael. Or, yes, McMichael of the Eagles. They tried to get Luke Hicks a little misdirection kick, but Crawford covers it up and have great field position with 419 to go. A lot of uh, discussion right there on the sideline. They were yelling for Payne DeGray to get over there, saying, hey, get over to the, the huddle. We want you out there, which, you know, with DeGray, uh, you know, he's uh, obviously a tight end, big-bodied tight end, so that means we're going to uh, pound away here, run the, run the clock. First and 10 for Crawford. Make Senequis burn their timeouts. Peyton Baker in at quarterback. Up oh, in the timeout, going to be called by Colonel Crawford. Coach Bruner will take his second time out of the half. We'll take one as well. You're listening to WQEL, streaming live online on the OH Report. We'll be back after these messages. Are you ready for the comeback? He's going to send a line drive down the field. It'll be fielded on the bounce. That is Schieffer. Schieffer finds a hole at the center. Schieffer turns on the burner. Schieffer could go. He's at the 50, 45. He's got one man to beat. Schieffer with the ball in his left hand. He's going to take it to the house. Winford opens up the second half with a kick return touchdown. WQL.com as well as DOA support. It's week eight of the pro football season. Browns were victorious last weekend on the final drive of the game to go up or to go to four and two on the season. Bengals had a bye. Cleveland on the road this week at Seattle. And Cincinnati has a Sunday afternoon game against San Fran. If you're good at picking winners and losers in, in pro football, play our pro football online challenge. You could win fifty thousand dollars. Vote on the carry and vote is hit and dropped by uh, that's Blake Foos once again. Yep. No gain on that play. Timeout going to be called by Seneca East. They brought in Baker there, did the shovel pass with Vote, but they were on top of it. Good job by uh, Foos. So Seneca East will try and keep this thing going, try and get the ball back, yep. trailing it 24 to 8, but and battling heavily against the clock. Well, yeah, I mean, Colonel Crawford is just going to run the ball. If they were smart, they're going to run the ball three times here, make Seneca East use their three timeouts. Um, and at that point in time, then, you know, you can reassess. I mean, obviously, Seneca East is going to have to then get the ball down the field. Um, you know, if they got to get in the end zone, get the two-point conversion, get an onside kick, score again, get another two-point conversion. So it's a real uphill climb for the Tigers. Not totally out of it. Only down two scores, um, but they need the two-point conversions and they need to get the stop here. Tenth year in a row the Tigers have made the playoffs, but Colonel Crawford showing that they are a little bit superior, not only in the N10. They did finish second in the N10 line carry, but Crawford, that three-headed monster, is just rearing its head tonight. They go to Thomas. Thomas to the 50. And the Tigers will burn another timeout, 4.07 to go in the ballgame. Some games going on tonight in the area. Hope allowed in hosting. They are the one seed at Montpierre, or hosting Montpierre. Convoy Crestview taking on Tiffin Calvert. Eden on Waynesfield Goshen. Upper Soda Valley taking on the six seed Macomb. And Lipsick and Pandora Gilboa. Of course, Davy Jones inside the phone board show, awaiting your phone calls and your scores. And one of those local scores, Northmore 37, Cole Grove 22. Yeah, starting to pull away in the fourth quarter there. Nice job by Northmore. I'm sure uh, some of Davy's faithful callers will be calling in with lots of pride over the uh, victory tonight. Last we've heard from the Winford Tenora game at the end of the third. It's Tenora 21, Winford 14. Galleon picking up the victory over Firelands. 30 point win there. 
30 to six, they go back to Thomas. Thomas throws the stiff arm, but he's gang tackled. No gain on that. And Trevor Vogt. East Tigers will take their final timeout. Trevor Vogt trying to call for the horse tackle. He's like, hey, you got him around, the, you got him, that would have given him the first down, so. Good effort right there by vote, but nothing nothing doing. That'll bring up fourth and 10 for the Eagles. Some other games in Division Six: Crestview at Cary, Ashland Mapleton at Columbia Station, Columbia. Of course, Castilla Margareta taking on Ottawa Hills. The winner of this will play the winner of that. And Black River taking on Collins Western Reserve. Gloucester Trimble at Marion Elgin. East Knox taking on Martins Ferry. McDonald at Danville. St. Paul at Toronto. Monroeville, who is having a pretty good season after a couple really down years here at New Middleton Springfield. And Lucas taking on Janesville Hillsdale. That's an eight versus nine. Out of the timeout. Eagles will line up to punt it. Foos and Parks back deep. Good news for Colonel Crawford. They made Seneca East burn all three timeouts. Low line drive is going to be picked up by Parks at the 21. Picks up a block from Foos, but Parks not a lot of space. And he'll go down at the 29-yard line. So the Tiger offense will come back out on the field with 3.51 to go. Yep. We'll see if... Uh, Seneca East, uh, you know, tries to go deep downfield. How's Colonel Crawford defensively going to play? They're going to drop everybody back. They don't want anybody getting over the top of them, that's for sure. No deep passes. But, uh, you know, you also don't want to just give them, you know, fast passes of 15 yards apiece that can get them down the field quickly. And we know Foose has got the arm to be able to chuck it. Of course, try and keep them inbounds, keep the clock yep. rolling. Empty backfield for Foose. Three down linemen for the Eagles. They'll bring four. Foos sets up the throw over oh, the middle. Chris was wide open. Wide the pass open. is going to be intercepted. The defensive back, there was miscommunication in the secondary. Foos was all, or excuse me, Caden Fritz was all alone. All he could have walked in the end zone. He could have backpedaled easily for six, but an interception by the Colonel Crawford Eagles will pretty much close the book on the Tigers tonight. And every once in a while, Every receiver on earth always thinks they're open, but every once in a while they get to go back to the huddle and be like, "Dude, I was wide open." And they'll and the coach and the quarterback will be like, "I didn't see you." And it's like, "Yeah, you, you eyed down your your one receiver, your primary receiver too much." And and that's what he's been doing a lot in this game. He's been looking at Young and he's been looking at at Parks pretty much primarily all game. And like you said, if he would have just looked left, he would have saw. Caden Fritz is 40 yards downfield with not a soul in it around him. Um, it was a defensive breakdown, but the interception in the middle by vote, and uh, now Colonel Crawford will be able to run this thing out. He could have ran all the way to Attica, and he, I don't think I, anybody would have got him. It was unbelievable how much op how open he was. First and 10, offense back out on the field. Foose going to bring heat up the middle again. Foose got an arm on him, but Thomas able to fall forward again up to the 30. And the clock will roll. Three and a half to play here from Crawford. 24 to 8 your score here in week 11. Eagles looking like they'll move on to play Ottawa Hills. And with this new format, they will host again. Yeah, absolutely. It works out pretty well. Um, for all of the higher seeded teams. Uh, mm. But again, you know, with all games now being moved to Friday, not enough neutral site fields to be able to do it in any other way. So again, really works out for these higher seeded teams. Don't have to travel. Heat Ooh. up the middle and Foos all over Trevor Vote. He sh should get credited for that sack. Yeah. And again, you, you could see he was like, oh boy, he, he's coming at me and I don't have a lot of space to go but for Colonel Crawford they'll just kind of keep keep pounding away at this thing the clock is their friend and uh you know when, by the time Seneca East gets the ball back if they get the stop here there's going to be you know a Less minute than, a minute yeah. 40 left on the clock or so and they're down two scores play clock at 14 they'll have to snap it at about 205 and on the five seconds now on the clock on the on the play clock 
Vote and a gun. Right gets on time. The snap. Following the blocker, vote gets the second Oof. level hit hard at the 29 yard line. Parks again on the stop. Two minute warning here from North Robinson. Not that there is a two minute warning. Warning. <laughs> Not in high school, but they get. You know, Senate Keys, be, but they Senate don't Keys would love to. But uh, we'll see now Colonel Crawford's going to walk over to the sideline. Coach Brunner going to let this thing play all the way down. Probably take the and then I'll take the delay time out penalty. Well, you, yeah, he's got to take the time out. He doesn't, he doesn't need him with clock will restart on the. Yeah, exactly. Just wait until there's one second left and then take the time out and then he'll punt it away. Clock at 90 seconds. Again, well, the only reason you don't want to back up five yards is because you know Seneca East is going to come after the punt. Mm -hmm. Like now, again, blocking a punt in high school football is actually pretty hard, but still. Delay Why give up the yards? They but they will. The They'll just take the delay game. Like I said, move it back five yards. They'll reset the ball, and the clock will start again. Give Crawford a, a lot of credit clock. about the fact that um, they have not, after uh, having some penalties in the first half, they've cleaned it up here in mm -hmm. the second. The first half, really the first quarter, was the story tonight. Mm -hmm. Brings up fourth and ten. Again, a fourth and ten situation, but with 117 on the clock. They'll send Parks and Foose back. Just got to prevent something big happening for the Eagles. Now they'll start the game clock again. Boat sets up. Heat coming, Oof. and he's able to get it off. Fielded by Foose at the Seneca East 40, and he's pushed out of bounds inside Eagle territory. A.G. with the stop, and they'll mark it. They'll actually mark it at the Colonel Crawford 43. See if uh, they can... Uh, have a conversation with uh, Blake Foose. Run, say, we're going to run a similar play, and let's hope their defense breaks down again. This time, look left. Winford has tied it up at 21 with 7.10 to go. Ashton Warren completes it to James Rinfus in the end zone. So a ball game up in Tenora. Three to the right, two to the left. Foose sets up, unloads. Oh. Far side, and it's incomplete. There was contact, yeah, there but was, no call. But ball sort of hung up there a little mm -hmm. bit. This is kind of first time that I saw throw, Foos throw a pass that didn't have uh, the juice behind it. Now, he was throwing from the far side of the field, so it is a pretty long throw to make, but um, it just hung up a little bit, and uh, you know his receiver down there, Robinson, kind of in a one-on-one -on -one hand fight. They were, the officials were like, eh, they're pushing off each other. We'll just let it go. Trips right, two to the left. Minute four on the clock for Foose and the Tigers. Parks goes in motion. Heat comes through the middle. Foose is flushed. Let's go of it. Ooh. Incomplete. Man, oh, they're, they're flags gonna, are going to come in. It felt uncatchable, but McMichael yep. still really, he took a shot at Taylor Young there. Kind of unnecessary and hit yeah, him way before the ball was. That's what they'll probably get is unnecessary roughness versus Pass interference. Yep. That's the only real discussion to be had because, I mean, McMichael took a, a clean shot at Taylor Young right pass in the back. They're going to call pass interference. That ball, will, he would have needed quite the step ladder to mm -hmm. get it. Extension ladder. Yes, exactly. That Winford touchdown was on fourth and 17. Never from count him out. 29. You know, we've seen Winford all year long, so we know if they're passing the football. They're, you know, they, they might throw it to a guy out of the backfield, but there's one guy that they're really looking at. <laughs> well, that's a race I'd like to see. James Rinfus versus Trevor Vogt. Oh, those, they both can fly. Here goes Foose over the middle. The he's receiver. Got his guy. Did he sliding, catch in the oh. end zone. I thought it might have been trapped, but nope. They're going to say he got it. That Big catch the right there, end. Beamer. Oh, that's Beamer. Okay, I thought it might have been Justin Wright or the tight end, but... Ryler Beamer with a huge catch in the end zone with 50 seconds to go. The Tigers trailing by 10, 24-14. Got to get the two-point conversion. Seneca East not done yet here in North Robinson. But this is the play. Yep. Two-point conversion attempt. Foose 
And now they're going to stop it. I think Bruner's going to take his final time out. He sure will. will. So we will take a quick break as well, but we have a ball game again here in North Robinson. It's a 10-point lead right now for Crawford with 50 seconds to go, 24 to 14. But the big two-point conversion upcoming for the Tigers. We'll be right back. He's going to send a line drive down the field. It'll be fielded on the bounce. That is Schieffer. Schieffer finds a hole at the center. Schieffer turns on the burners. Schieffer could go. He's at the 50, 45. He's got one man to beat. Schieffer with the ball in his left hand. He's going to take it to the house. Whitford opens up the second half with the kick return touchdown. Down 10. 50 seconds left. they got to get it. Double tight. They'll go double reverse. Park's going to throw. In there the, he is. In the center of the end zone, it is caught. Flag down. Flag comes in. Ryder in the back just by himself. But what are they going to call? The back judge threw the flag. Yep. Ryder made the catch. And Senegis going into their bag of tricks there. Sneaky little play right there. And a good job by Seneca East, but... They're backing up like they know this is going to be called against them. So they will get another crack at it. We'll see if they have another one is. deeper Nope, they say the they gave it to him. Okay. It's a, it's a penalty on Colonel Crawford. So it's an eight-point game, 24-16, with Not 50 seconds to go. Onside yet. kick coming here from North Robinson. Things have gotten exciting again. We'll take a timeout. We'll be right back. Are you ready for the comeback? He's going to send a line drive down the field. It'll be fielded on the bounce. That is Schieffer. Schieffer finds a hole at the center. Schieffer turns on the burners. Schieffer could go. He's at the 50, 45. He's got one man to beat. Schieffer with the ball in his left hand. He's going to take it to the house. Whitford opens up the second half with the kick return touchdown. <laughs> WQEL.com, they called the penalty illegal man downfield. They said it was against Colonel Crawford, but that can only be yeah, an offensive say, penalty. There's no such thing as an illegal man downfield. And they, okay, it was illegal helmet contact. Okay, there okay, we so go. So we got things sorted out. All right, that makes so a little Seneca more sense. Seneca East is back in this thing, scoring 16 points here in the fourth. And now they, you know what? This is big because the penalty puts them in a situation if they can get this onside kick, they can score. They don't have a lot of yards in front of exactly. them. So this onside kick is huge. Here Dude, it is. Happy birthday up the center. They got a chance at it. Officials Crawford's come in. and they got it. And it's going to be Colonel Crawford ball. Foose trying to go with what they call a happy birthday Micah kick. Thomas. Micah Thomas, the hands team right in the middle. Micah had a huge night tonight with a couple of touchdowns and probably the biggest play right there. So two kneel downs That'll will do seal it. the deal, but the Seneca East Tigers had all the fight in the world. They, ne they could have easily rolled over and gave this thing away. It was 17-0 at the break. The Tigers have come back and made it an eight-point game, but two victory formations for the Eagles will put this thing to bed. Colonel Crawford fans, uh, they had to have a mini heart attack there uh, because Seneca East had a big opportunity to recover that football. Yeah, it was squibbed right, it just slow enough that it was going to get to that 10 yards, and I thought maybe some of the guys could get, could beat the ball to the 10-yard mark, but Thomas came up on it. Game clock down to 15. There's the final kneel, and the Colonel Crawford Eagles escape. 24-16 here in week number 11 to move on. What a fourth quarter here from North Robinson. We thought it was over, but yep. Senekis never had that in their head. But they fall short tonight by eight, 
to 16. Stay tuned to WQEL 92.7 FM halftime or post game show coming up courtesy of Ken and Matt Studer of Ken Standing Seam. We'll be right back. Tanya, what do I have left? What do I got left? Are you ready for the comeback? I wish I was out there. Let's unretire. Why, Matt? Randy Moss. What? Dan Marino? You are right? Hey, Grandpa! Grandpa? I still got it! 22! 22! Hey, 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 I need that senior discount. That's, that's the case. Mr. Reno, you mind if I take a selfie? Thank you. I'm good right here, bro. <laughs> On retirement, who'd be dumb enough to do that? Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Casasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Casasa. He's gonna send a line drive down the field. It'll be fielded on the bounce. That is Schieffer. Schieffer finds a hole at the center. Schieffer turns on the burners. Schieffer could go. He's at the 50, 45. He's got one man to beat. Schieffer with the ball in his left hand. He's going to take it to the house. Whitford opens up the second half with a kick return touchdown. Take a look at all the action from Friday Night Football right here in North Central Ohio with great analysis highlights, coach interviews, and so much more every single Friday night right here on the Always Report. Good evening. We are going to take a second to thank our generous sponsors. They have this game brought to you live and free on the OH Report. Thank you to First Federal Community Bank, Burkhart Farm Center, Old 30 Barbecue, and Baker's Pizza out of Bucyrus, Sutton Bank, Frito-Lay, and last but not least, WBCO and WQEL. Coming up next, our MVP interview. Stay tuned.
We are back with our Baker's Pizza MVP, Micah Thomas. Walk me through the game tonight. You know, playoffs, th everything's on the line. What was going through your head? Well, I had to go out there and play for my brothers out there. I mean, we've been doing this since literally as soon as the uh, summer started, as soon as school got out. So I was just out there. I just wanted to make my whole family proud and make the brothers in the locker room as proud as, I, as, proud as they could be. You had 167 yards on 32 carries and two touchdowns tonight. What was, you know, what do you attribute that to? I attribute that to my O-line. I love every single one of them. Connor McMichael blocked his tail off. I just love that kid. Uh, Trevor Vote too. I mean, he brings up a lot of attention and it just helps me. I'm a, I just, I'm a ground and pound. I just get all the dirty work. Talk me through that last um, special teams play. You know, the game's on the line. It's a close game. They kick that ball, and you're the one who lands on it. What was going through your head there? Oh, I knew they. Uh, we got that penalty that put them on the 45, and 10 yards back we would have to be at the 35. So I knew basically if we didn't get that ball, they could have went down and scored, and then we could have went in overtime, and the outcome could have been completely different because they had all the momentum. You played home tonight, and you'll continue to play home next week against Ottawa Hills. Um, do you think that atmosphere helps in these situations? Oh, without a doubt. That the first half, we were we were going. The entire fans. I didn't hear a single thing from Seneca East. I don't want to talk bad about them because they, they're a great like uh, tradition out there. They have a great football program and that uh, atmosphere there. But when you can quiet an atmosphere for the away team, it's actually it's pretty cool and it helps a lot out during the game to get the calls. Lastly, anyone you want to shout out? We had a lot of people watching online tonight. I want to shout out my uh, mom and dad my grandma and grandpa, my sister, and also my good buddy, Keaton Cooper. <laughs> thank you guys for coming out tonight, and thank you. Hey, thank you. Good luck. Are you ready for the comeback? Man, I wish I was out there. Let's unretire. Why Matt? Yes, Randy Moss. Yes, what? Dan Marino? You are right? Hey, Grandpa! Grandpa? I still got it! 22! 22! Hey, 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 I need that senior discount. That's, that's the game. Mr. Reno, you mind if I take a selfie? Thank you. I'm good right here, bro. <laughs> On retirement, who'd be dumb enough to do that? Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Casasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Casasa. He's gonna send a line drive down the field. It'll be fielded on the bounce. That is Schieffer. Schieffer finds a hole at the center. Schieffer turns on the burner. Schieffer could go. He's at the 50, 45. He's got one man to beat. Schieffer with the ball in his left hand. He's going to take it to the house. Whitford opens up the second half with a kick return touchdown. Take a look at all the action from Friday Night Football right here in North Central Ohio with great analysis highlights, coach interviews, and so much more every single Friday night right here on the Always Report.
It is time now for our Burkow Farm Center post game show. I'm here with Keaton Cooper, our lovely cameraman tonight. He got, he was able to watch the game while also running the camera and he got the full experience and he's going to give us the rundown on all of the stats and just basically what happened. Yeah, so um, Colonel Crawford started out with the ball tonight. They went down, drove it, got it within the 30, and then a fumble happened. Seneca took over, um, had a four and out with Blake Thews punting it back to Crawford, who then ran down, and Micah Thomas got the first touchdown of the game, making it 7-0. Seneca then had a second attempt, not working out, punted it back to Crawford, who then ran another touchdown with Connor McMichael getting his first one of the night. And then similar play with Seneca, um, having some drop passes, gives it back to Colonel Crawford where they finish the half 17-0 with a 44-yard field goal by Braxton Morton. That leads us into halftime. We come back out of halftime. Seneca gets the ball with a little momentum. They drive down and they get a touchdown of their own making the game seven, or, oh no. They, um, a first time, they did not, they gave it back to Crawford. Crawford gave it back to them. Then they drove down, passed the, passing the ball, got momentum and got their touchdown with a two point conversion, which led to 17, 24 to seven. And then Crawford had a four and out, gave it back to um, Seneca who then drove down and got another touchdown, making it 16-24. They tried an onside kick, and it went to Crawford where they kneaded out and caught it again. Awesome. Thank you so much for that, Keaton. And that is going to wrap things up here. We just want to thank everyone for watching Live and Free. I want to give another quick shout-out to our sponsors before we head out of here. Thank you so much to Burkhart Farm Center, First Federal Community Bank, Baker's Pizza out of Bucyrus, Old 30 Barbecue, Sutton Bank, Frito-Lay, WBCO and WQEL, and Scout Construction Services. Stay tuned tonight. We will have the Pigskin Show later this evening where I will be on it, Madeline Cizzuto, along with all of the other scores from around the area that we covered tonight and predictions for the upcoming tournament. But that will do it. 